some questions you have to ask yourself. The one is, did Christ really die for the sins of the whole world? I mean, the Bible says he, he did. And so, if he did, then why is anyone going to hell and burn forever? The common message that you hear in Christian churches, especially on the, the, from churches with the um, Arminius persuasion teachings, is that you have to make a choice that God loves you, but if you don't choose Jesus, that he's going to burn you in hell forever. Um, that idea is wrong. Because what the Bible teaches is that God is choosing certain people to be members of the body of Christ right now. God is not trying to save everyone right now. That is not his plan. His eventual plan is to reconcile all of his creation. Read Colossians 1 verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. That is God's plan. Every knee is going to bow before the Lord Jesus Christ and confess that Jesus is Lord. Not against their will. Not God is not going to, you know, say, Confess, confess. No, everyone is eventually going to be reconciled to God. Everyone is eventually going to see um, that Christ has has reconciled uh, through his through the cross all all of his creation. All will be eventually reconciled. So this. Um, this whole teaching about you have to make a choice, either turn or burn, is a false is a false teaching. It's a false uh, characterization of Almighty God. Um, let me put it to you this way: you have you have Calvin on one side and Arminius Arminius on the other. Calvin taught that. Christ died only for the elect, and that everyone else is going to uh, suffer in hell forever, in the flames of hell. Doesn't that sound sick? That's because it is. The Ar Arminius group, on the other hand, believes also in, in hell and eternal conscious torment, but they believe that you have a choice. And if you don't make the right choice, well, then that's your fault, you know, basically. So this idea of human free will and eternal conscious torment are ridiculous. And they are taught in almost every church. What is really going on here is that God is choosing certain individuals now. And the rest will be dealt with later at the Great White Throne. We'll get into the um, the lake of fire at another time because that's that's not hell. That's not eternal conscious torment. Romans chapter nine basically says that we are all we all come from the same lump of clay, and from that lump of clay, God is making some vessels of honor and other vessels of dishonor. Okay. Here's here's um, another another verse. This should this should help you to see that this is not a human thing. Salvation is is God's work, not man's. Not man's choosing his own destiny. That it is God. First Corinthians chapter one, starting at verse twenty six. For you see your calling, brethren. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many mobile are called. 
But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are. You're not saved by saying the sinner's prayer. You're not saved by mustering up belief and faith in Jesus Christ that he died for your sins. No, you're saved by grace through faith, and that faith is given to you. You are not saved by faith. You have faith because you are saved. God is the one choosing who gets saved when. And he's not sending everyone else into a never-ending hell. To say that you have a free will means that your choices are neither influenced by God or by Satan, and that you can choose God apart from him choosing you, that you, you merely have to believe uh, that you can generate the faith necessary to have salvation, to be saved, is, is a lie, and it's not how it works. Let me give you an example of why human free will is, does not exist. Look at Judas, for example, who betrayed Christ. He did not have a free will in this matter. Um, God decided that Judas was going to betray Christ. In fact, to make that happen, he had Satan enter Judas. So, where was Judas's free will? Uh, what about John the Baptist, who had the Holy Spirit when he was in his mother's womb? Okay. Um, he didn't get a chance to choose. I mean, he was he was being influenced by the Holy Spirit from as a, as a fetus. Jesus said, "You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you." And he was speaking to his disciples. We choose God as a result of 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 Him choosing us. I'm not saying we we don't make choices or that we can't make choices. But our choices are just not free. They are, they are influenced one way or another. A person is saved because God chooses them. And at some point in their life, they will hear the gospel, which is 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, that Christ died for our sins, was entombed, and rose again. And when they hear that, they will latch on to that. They will be searching for that. That will meet a very deep need inside of them that God has placed there. That's how salvation works. It is completely an act of God. God's plan for, the, for his creation is reconciliation, not torture. Um, people that are, are wicked to the core they were made that way. People that are saved and that, you know, they have faith. They were made that way. They were given that. So I'm not saying we don't make choices. I'm just saying that God is the one choosing our destiny. And the best we can do is share the gospel. We are commanded to do that, share the gospel, tell the good news. It really wouldn't be good news if God was going to burn most of his creation forever and ever. Um, that would be a nightmare. That would not be good news at all. For God's plan for his creation is reconciliation, not torture. just want to show you guys a great book that I found off of Amazon. It's called The Divine Reconciliation of the Universe. Um, I think you'll really enjoy it. There are several points of study 
uh, in this book it talks about the, the false teachings of hell, the false teachings of human free will, and many other things. Highly recommend this book. Okay, and also the Concordant Literal New Testament. It's a much better translation than most of the Bibles out there. So, just sharing with you guys. Take care.